take a seat before we start. So the first part of the morning session, you will be from all from the speaker online. Do not destroy my notes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, um, okay, so and then the second part after the coffee break, we will have one more online and then your presentation, the participant presentation. So can you please upload the presentation during the coffee break so that we are ready to start when we come back for those of you that have to upload. Okay, so these are just uh, the housekeeping announcements. So now maybe we can start. So this morning, the first uh, uh, session will be ecosystem and biodiversity. He will be chaired by Elvira and Andras, they are both colleagues from the, Elvira you know already, Andras just arrived. They are both colleagues from working group two and they will drive you all through the session. Maybe if you want to introduce yourself uh, because we did already. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you very much. So hi everyone. Um, it's a nice sunny day here in Trieste. I'm happy to be um, just uh, helping sharing this session today. Uh, so my name is Andres Alegria. I'm the graphics and data officer from Working Group 2 in the IPCC. And um, yeah, and um, I'll be um, introducing the speakers and uh, helping to um, share um, the questions and answers part. And I think you all know me, actually, after the last couple of days, so I'll pass back to Andres. All right. So, um, so again, uh, thank you very much to all of those um, joining us here um, in the room and uh, those joining us here online. So for the people joining us online, we have about uh, uh, 35 or 40 or so uh, participants here in the room. Um, and we have the... Sorry, I'm like back and forth because I don't know where the camera is. Here, right? So we have uh, three speakers uh, joining us today uh, virtually. And uh, this first session will focus on projections and risk assessments for biodiversity and ecosystems. Uh, our three uh, participants uh, here today online will um, share with us case studies on how climate data is being used to and collected with a focus on, um, on marine biodiversity. So we're going to have uh, Elizabeth uh, uh, Heathertington from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Uh, then we'll uh, li listen to uh, Cathy Smith from the Marine Biological Association in the UK and uh, Chaya Shaudhari from the Alfred Wrangler Institute. So welcome to our participants. And um, are we all online here? Can you say hello? Hi. Hello, that's Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, here. Hi, Chaya. Good morning. Hello. And Hi. Kathy Sorry, my video is detected. Oh, there it is. Yes. All right. <laughs> yes. So, thank you so much for uh, joining us here today. It's um, it's really nice to um, hear about these different case, uh, case studies on uh, marine biodiversity aspects and their. Um, uh, relationship to the uh, IPCC assessments. So um, with no further delay, uh, let's us, uh, begin with uh, Elizabeth's uh, presentation. You're welcome to start sharing your screen and um, get the show going. Thank you very much. Um, and just for the presenters, just a few notes, we're going to have a um, short uh, question and answer sessions in between the presentations. Thank you. Okay, I am just getting ready to share my screen. And hopefully you all can see that. Looking good. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Liz Hetherington, and I'm a researcher at Scripps Institution of Oceanography in California. And um, <clears throat> with the time difference, yeah, I'm not used to giving talks at this time, so hopefully I'm coherent and uh, I'm I'm really happy to be with you all today. So um, today I wanted to talk about some work I'm um, doing with 
uh, DEUCE, which is the Deep Ocean Observing Strategy, um, and a project I'm working on with um, a large group at DEUCE where we're collecting uh, deep ocean science gaps and um, analyzing them to inform our understanding and monitoring of climate change in the deep ocean. <clears throat> As I said, our work is focused on identifying gaps in our understanding of climate change in the deep ocean. And we're doing that um, by looking uh, and reading and examining the IPCC um, <clears throat> AR6 or uh, sixth ass assessment reports. Um, and we're doing this because really our, um, these most recent reports are our best estimates um, and projections of how climate change will impact the deep ocean. Um, and I'm assuming that all of you are familiar with the IPCC reports, um, but maybe you're not as familiar with um, the designations of confidence in these reports. Um, <clears throat> so with each statement of something related to climate change, there is a parenthetical statement that says what the confident, what our confidence level is in that statement. And there's a really specific process for characterizing both our understanding and our uncertainty. Um, and this figure here is from um, <clears throat> figure one in AR6, chapter one, showing that we have these um, different types of observations that we use to evaluate different types of evidence. And <clears throat> um, this the types of evidence are used to then um, make some sort of designation of our confidence in, in the statement. So this relies on the type of data, the quantity. So um, the, not only the quality of the data, but also, you know, the, the quantity. How many studies do we have? How, how much data do we have on this subject? Um, and then out of those studies, um, how consistent are the results? Or are there major disagreements in, um, in the findings? In, um, and conclusions of studies on similar topics. So this information is used to evaluate the confidence in, in different statements. And we were interested in examining some of these confidence statements and um, trying to get a better idea of where climate gaps exist for the deep sea and how we can potentially fill some of those gaps and have a more coordinated effort to improve confidence for AR7. <clears throat> so our, our primary objective was to identify and characterize deep ocean climate gaps to inform AR7 and future observing systems. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm um, an early career researcher with DEUCE, which is the Deep Ocean Observing Strategy, again, and DEUCE is this international community-based group that coordinates deep ocean observing. And the main goals of DEUCE are to um, understand the state of the uh, global deep ocean, um, its response to climate change, and other human disturbances. So it's a UN Ocean Decade program and a GOOSE project. And um, I'm mentioning this because just keep in mind that everything we're, we're talking about in this project is specifically related to the deep ocean, which is defined um, roughly as 200 meters and, and, and deeper in, in the global ocean. And our approach to assessing these reports since DEUCE is um, this large international community was to get a team of volunteers to help us um, assess the reports. So we um, assessed uh, working groups one, two, and three, um, the AR6 synthesis report, and then the special report on the ocean and cryosphere and global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Um, and what we did um, <clears throat> was we created a prompt for volunteers to all sign up for, to um, evaluate at least one chapter of these reports. And then we had two assessors per chapter 
to make sure to basically have a quality control measure. And keep in mind that this project is ongoing. So we sent the initial, um, <clears throat> we, we were able to um, get Deuce volunteers in the last few months, but the final assessments aren't due until the end of June. So all of this is very much still in progress. And what we had these volunteers do was we had them search for low confidence in the reports that they, in the chapters that they volunteered for. And then um, they assessed whether the low confidence designation was directly related to the deep sea. So was this in a section where um, it was explicitly about the deep sea? And if not, is it something that is at least relevant to the deep sea? If so, we asked uh, the volunteers or the assessors to include it in, in their report. And what the assessors did, so this is just showing all of the the instances of low confidence. So again, we're, we're interested in those um, deep ocean climate gaps that we are defining by what has, what areas have the, the most low confidence designations. And then we have the volunteers um, fill out a data validated spreadsheet where they put some basic information about um, the report, the uh, subsection, title, the specific topic, and then um, if a stressor and an impact was mentioned, um, we had a list here of on the right hand side of all of uh, the different stressors, for example, and they were categorized by biology, physics, biogeochemistry, um, <clears throat> and a, a stressor or an impact wasn't always mentioned in the report, but if it was, then they categorize them. And then um, the assessors um, designated or determined what the um, low confident confidence rationale or designation was caused was from. So um, <clears throat> so this was a way for us to quantify um, where these low confidence assessments are coming from. And um, we're hoping that um, this project will reveal where major gaps in our observing system that can be um, extended or improved, um, where um, models can be, uh, where there are gaps in models. And we're using this to guide our, um, a, a fall meeting for, that we're having um, in, in the fall with due. So we're hoping to have all of these assessments in by the fall. Um, as I mentioned, this prompt was sent to the Juice community in April, 26 people volunteered. Um, our reviews are underway, but I wanted to share some very preliminary findings with you today. So, so far we have um, almost 200 um, no confidence designations and not all of the chapters of each report have been um, evaluated so far, but we're already starting to see some patterns emerge. So most of the designations here, we have um, the IPCC report on the y-axis, and then the x-axis has our different categories of what the low confidence rationale was. And we're seeing that most of the designations of low confidence are due to either a limited number of studies, um, low model confidence, or we had an other category. Um, and those, those three areas seem to be where a lot of the gaps are. So this makes sense. It's focused on the deep sea, which is um, inaccessible compared to a lot of other ecosystems. So it makes sense that there are limited studies, um, but we're finding that there's also just a lot of low confidence designations that um, aren't explained. And in this graph and the other heat maps, I'm, I'm showing relative percentage. So here that means within a report, um, what percentage are of the low confidence designations had uh, no explanation or were because of limited studies. Um, and this is a figure that again, is a heat map showing the relative percentage 
percentages. Um, and this is broken down by our, our stressor categories um, in biogeochemical, bi biology, and physical, our physical parameters. Um, <clears throat> and we're seeing, again, a couple things emerge, even though it's preliminary. Something that I thought was really interesting was that um, ocean-based climate interventions is something that um, came up a lot with uh, <clears throat> um, a lot. There were a lot of no confidence designations, likely because this is such an emerging field and there's not a lot of, of data about that, the, the, um, how these stressors will impact the deep ocean. And then also um, in terms of physics, the biggest stressor is ocean temperature heat content, which makes sense. And then um, I also wanted to, to briefly present this as raw count since the previous figure showed relative percentages. So the most numerous stressor was um, rising ocean temperature um, heat content. And then um, this is a similar figure, but instead of um, uh, grouping it by stressor, we grouped it by impact. So um, what, uh, where would the impact be on in the deep ocean? Is it again, you know, biogeochemical, biological, or physical? So where would we see these impacts? And um, the most numerous impacts that we're seeing um, for these low confidence designations are on the ocean um, carbon cycle. And then in terms of biology, um, a lot of low confidence in terms of ecosystem impacts. So while there were a lot of, um, uh, a lot more data perhaps on specific species or um, specific components of the ecosystems, larger ecosystem-wide impacts, food web impacts, things like that had a lot of um, low confidence designations that um, had either were limited studies or had no explanation. And then um, again, just showing the, the raw counts here, um, no confidence designation for um, ecosystem impacts on ecosystems. And then this, the second most common one so far was um, how ocean circulation will be impacted by by climate change. So um, again, I just wanted to emphasize that these are all um, very preliminary results. Um, the final reviews are, are at the end of June, and then we'll take the full data set and do a similar analysis of these low confidence designations and see um, where the primary areas of low confidence are and what the designations are, and then digging into if most of them like we're seeing so far are either were not explained or were in these other categories, digging into that more to see um, if we can pinpoint um, some, some of these gaps. And then we're also having discussions about, you know, potential topics that aren't even covered in the reports um, because there's so little data on it um, or it's it's such an emerging topic that it wasn't even um, highlighted or, or discussed in AR6, um, but likely have low confidence designation. So that's something we're we're discussing and hoping to to integrate into into our report. Um, and again, we're hoping that um, these analyses will be useful for AR7 and for, um, the DEUCE community and the deep ocean observing community and how we can um, improve our, our models and observing systems to better understand how climate impacts the deep ocean. And with that, um, I'd like to thank and acknowledge all of my collaborators on this project and the DEUCE community um, and volunteers who have contributed to the assessment so far. And of course, all of the IPCC authors and contributors who make all of this work possible. And thank you all for having me today. Oh, thank you very much, Elizabeth. That was great.
Excellent. Uh, I think that's an excellent example of, uh, of, of um, an assessment that uh, will prove uh, valuable for the next cycle. It's timely and relevant. And I think the framework also allows itself to be applied to other topics of interest uh, across the, the IPCC spectrum. And with that, I open the floor for uh, one or two questions for Elizabeth. Yes? Good, good morning. Oh, yes. Ms. Please. Lee. Yeah, I would like to know uh, when you say deep ocean, would it be referred to the floor going up or is it sea level going down? Uh, what, what is the scope? Oh, yeah. So it's um, anything around 200 meters below the surface and down. So the, that whole water column and also including um, the deep ocean floor below 200 meters. So um, uh, essentially not, not shallow ocean, the top 200 meters or very coastal um, benthic e ecosystems like coral, you know, shallow coral reefs, but it does include deep sea corals. Yeah. So th this does this study includes coral bleaching or seashell ble bleaching? Um, no, it doesn't. So, um, and that's something that, that um, since we're specifically focused on the deep ocean, we only um, reviewed chapters that um, had some relevancy to the deep sea and also um, only um, uh, quantified or had assessors report low confidence designations that were related to the deep sea. So this is something that for absolutely could be replicated and done for um, the epipelagic or the shallow ocean or specific ecosystems, but um, that wasn't included in, in this report. Thank you. Thank you. We have an, uh, one more question here from the um, participants on site. Um, yeah, so this is Alex Ruane from NASA. Um, I was just curious, this is a, an interesting approach, and of course you, I, I believe, were restricting your, your analysis of the low confidence statements to related to the deep ocean. Um, I'm, I, it would be interesting to come up with a bunch of categories. Uh, this is beyond your scope, so I'm not trying to put it on your shoulders, but for the IPCC to, to do a bunch of categories and just characterize, I would imagine the deep ocean is one of those areas that has more low confidence statements than you know, let's say agriculture or something that is you know much more uh, at our fingertips. Let's say so. I, I wonder if there's a kind of broader uh, effort with Induce or, or elsewhere to try to um, to make that case. And and in particular with the theme of this workshop, you know, are there pieces of climate information, you know, metrics that you've determined that that you can't really uh, measure or or get from climate models that that would be very helpful for your planning. Thanks. Thanks, that's really interesting. Um, and I completely agree with you. Um, the deep ocean probably, or almost, um, I have high confidence that there's more low confidence designations, um, you know, for deep sea ecosystems. Um, but I think that would be a really interesting approach to um, do something similar with different whether it's ecosystem categories or or however you would want to divide it um, to, to really do a quantitative assessment. In terms of our DEUCE efforts right now, there's not anything, um, you know, ongoing, but it's certainly um, something that, you know, that we could be involved with or, um, you know, like I said, other other groups could kind of replicate this up or expand upon this approach. And then um, for your second question, the, um, the short answer is yes, I'm sure some of those things are emerging. We just have not um, really looked at the data um, enough yet since um, it's all very preliminary still um, to know what some of those measurements or metrics might be. But we did have um, we did have people write comments 
um, and some detailed information about the, the different topics and, and to add more comments on where the, the designation came from. So we're hoping that once we dig into the data more, some of those things will emerge as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And um, uh, Elizabeth, again, thank you so much for uh, uh, sharing with us your uh, presentation and the effort despite the challenges of uh, time zone difference. So thank you very much. And uh, now we're moving up for the second presentation and uh, let me introduce Cassie, Cathy Smith again from the Marine Biological Association in the UK. Uh, so Cathy, over to you, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Hi, let me try and share my screen here. Hold on a second. Uh, 